Hello and welcome to this review of my AJAZZ AK60 keyboard. This keyboard was provided to me by GearBest, who also sent me the AK33 I reviewed back in November. They arrived at the same time, so I've had this keyboard for quite a while now, I just didn't have time to review it earlier. The usual disclaimer applies, this is a commercial donation, but I am doing this thing completely impartially, pointing out any flaws I find. Now, unlike the AK33 I reviewed earlier, which was a very cheap keyboard, less than 40 euros with free shipping in fact, this one is almost three times as expensive at 105 euros, again with free shipping. It appears to be discontinued now, which might explain why the contact at GearBest was so adamant that I review it instantly, which, if I didn't, she claimed would result in her getting sacked on the spot for some reason, so if that's the case, sorry Olivia. Now I find this keyboard incredibly hard to get my mind around, so instead of my usual format this is going to be more of a guerrilla style video where I focus a little bit less on the details of the board because that's not really the moral of the story in this case I'd say. The AK33 was a fairly simple keyboard to review, basically it boiled down to it's a cheap 75% with good backlighting, you can't beat it for price if you like Christmas trees. But this thing is apparently a more serious keyboard, which makes it annoying because frankly I find it kind of hard to take it seriously. At 105 euros it goes into premium territory where it's in competition with brands like Corsair, Logitech, Zolman, Cooler Master and dozens of others, and for a Chinese clone board that's rather dangerous territory to be in. See I've recommended clone keyboards in the past because I don't really see what these premium brands have to offer that makes them worth three times the price, but if this Ajaz is in the same price bracket as those it better be really something seriously good. I'll be honest, when I saw that this thing was over 100 euros, which was after I had tested it I should add, I was kind of shocked because if I'd read it was 40 euros I would have believed it too, and the review would have probably turned out more positive as well. So compared to the cheapest chips AK33, it uses a full size form factor, it's much heavier and better built with a bezeled mounting plate, it comes with media controls including this nice volume knob etc. Even the styling is very different so it doesn't really feel like it has much relation to the AK33 at all. Now the AK60 uses the same switches as the AK33, AJAS switches, which are a clone of Cherry switches produced by the same company that makes Zorro switches, and in this particular case they're the blue clicky ones. It also uses the same keycaps, which are laser ablated ABS. It has N key rollover, just like the AK33, and similarly reasonably high quality RGB backlighting that I singled out as basically the most important feature on the AK33, as it's pretty uncommon for a keyboard that cheap to have RGB backlighting, especially of decent quality. So that leaves me to think, is it really worth 65 euros extra, for which you can buy almost two AK33s more on top of the one, just to get a full size layout and dedicated media controls basically. Now as for whether it holds up to premium brands like the ones listed before, whatever man, it's all the same generic crap to me, almost none of them are interesting, it's frankly beside the point I'm trying to make here. So just to give you some more background on this, I used this for the customary week, but not in one stint, but in several ones. See, I first used this for a couple of days, and then I just got sick of it. It's super loud, and not in a good way. Honestly, I can't stand this sound. The lighting is good looking admittedly, but quite distracting and the lettering being on the front of the caps rather than on top, which I suspect they've done to mask the common problem of uneven lighting through the top of the caps, is pretty obnoxious and hard to type on if you're not a touch typist. Moreover, it's just generic, a 100 something dollar gaming keyboard with MX switches, N key rollover, backlighting, media controls, wind key lock and a standard form factor. I mean, that's basically the entire keyboard market right now, how boring can you get? This keyboard gives me almost no material to work with, why this and not one of the hundreds of basically identical alternatives? In this regard the AK33 was a lot more interesting to review. So anyway, after those few days of constant use, I switched it to backup keyboard. Yeah, the backup keyboard, that's the one you never get to see, but it's always there right outside of the field of view of the camera on the side of my desk here. 
Right now, it's a bloody keyboard I've had for ages that I really should get on with doing a written review for, but for months now, it's been mostly this Ajaz thing. The backup keyboard is there because when you test all these weird keyboards like I do, especially old ones, sometimes the keyboard randomly stops registering or some fault develops or the layout or the switches are just too crappy to use during competitive gaming or some keys are missing on the main keyboard. And it's also very useful to use during filming when the keyboard I'm actually reviewing is often unplugged for many of the scenes. So all in all, the backup keyboard doesn't get constant but still regular use. And in this role, I found it to be quite nice, actually. It's been very dependable and it's not too annoying when you only use it for short stints. So where does that leave us? What do I think of it? Well, it's a keyboard. Like I said, it's about as generic as it gets for a keyboard nowadays. And I really struggle to come up with anything unique about it that would let me to tell you to get this one and not any of the others out there. It served me well, for sure, and the lighting is nice and colourful, just like on the AK-33. Not all boards in this price bracket are full RGB either. It didn't develop any issues during testing, so it's just... okay, I guess. All in all, it's not great, but it's not bad either, it's just generic, and the typing noise is horrendous. I think the 100 plus euro price tag is a tad on the steep side for a keyboard that really has absolutely nothing interesting to offer. But if you don't want a hassle finding out about keyboards that are not boring and that can't simply be summed up with backlighting, media controls, end key rollover and crappy switches and don't mind shelling out a few dollars more than you probably should have to pay for this, I'm sure it'll be okay for you. That's it for this review. I realize it's rather different from my other reviews, but I really felt this was the best way to convey what I think about this particular keyboard. Still, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.